Unit 9, Day 8, Circles in the Coordinate Plane. We want to talk about the standard equation of a circle. Anytime you write the equation of a circle, it'll be in this format. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. h and k are going to stand for the x and y coordinate of the center of the circle, and r stands for the radius. So you're going to take that information and substitute it into this equation to find the equation of the circle. Now, this equation and diagram are given to you on the SOL formula sheet, so you don't need to memorize it, you just need to remember how to use it. The one thing I want to point out to you is that in the formula is a subtraction sign here. So that should tell you that when h and k are actually positive coordinates, you're going to see a subtraction in here, and when h and k are negative coordinates, you're going to see the opposite, a plus sign in here because when you subtract a negative number that means you're adding a positive. So we want to work through some examples and I just want to remind you of our formula x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared and let's walk through a few of these. In these you're given the equation of a circle and it asks you to give the center and the radius. So remember the center is going to be the coordinates h and k. So you want to look here, x squared and y squared. There's no h and there's no k. So the only number that you can subtract from x and y, and it's not going to change it, is 0, 0. So the center of the circle is actually 0, 0. Now, when we want to look at the radius, it tells us that that number that's by itself on the other side of the equal sign is the radius squared. So that 25 is going to be equal to the radius squared. So to get the radius by itself, you have to take the square root of both sides. Then these will cancel out and you're left with the radius equal to 5. So this is our final answer. Center of 0, 0, radius of 5. Let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. We again have the radius squared is equal to 25, so we know that when we work that out, the radius will be 5. So we just want to find the center. Now, remember what I said about the fact that it's a subtraction sign in the original equation. So that means this is going to tell us that our coordinates actually be opposite. So h is the coordinate that goes with the x. So this is going to be a negative 4 for our x coordinate, and our y is going to be a positive 2. These are the coordinates for the center of our circle. Go ahead and pause and find the radius and the center of this next circle, and then check back with me to see if you got it right. Hopefully you found that the center was 0, 4, and that the radius was 3. In this next set of examples, we need to give the coordinates of the center the radius and then write the equation of the circle. So we need to pull all of the information off of the graph that we're given. So if you look carefully, look for the center, which is going to be right in the middle. Here, it's our origin, so that's 0, 0. Then, in order to count the radius, you want to know the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. Now, the easiest place to, get, to count this is going to be along the grid of the coordinate plane. So either count straight up, down, left, or right. One, two, three. So our radius is going to be three. Now when we put this into our equation, again, I'll remind you real quick, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So let's go ahead and substitute the information that we have. h and k are both going to be zero, so we know that this is just going to be x squared plus y squared equals, and the radius squared, 3 squared is going to be 9. Let's go ahead and try one more together. Here's our center, which is 0, 2. When you count out, the radius is going to be 2. And when we write our equation, the x coordinate, that h is going to be 0, so we just have x squared plus y minus 2 squared equals our radius squared is 4. 
go ahead and pause, find the information that we need for this last one, and check back with me to see if you got it right. Hopefully you should have gotten that the center is 1, 1, the radius is 1, and the equation is negative x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 1. Here we want to do the opposite of what we just did, which is graph each circle given the equation in standard form. So in order to graph, first we need to pull out some information from our equation. So we want to know the center point. This again, we did this before, but when it says minus 5, we know that's actually going to be a positive 5 for the x-coordinate. Minus 3 means a positive 3. And then 16, we need to take the square root of that, which is going to give us a radius of 4. So we want to find the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. So here's our center. And we, are, we know our radius needs to be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's how big our circle needs to be. Now, in order to sketch, you want to go up, 2, 3, 4, to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then go down, 1, 2, 3, 4. Once you have those points, you'll be able to sketch your circle. Now, I'm going to use a smart board <laughs> to create a circle, but you can just sketch yours on your notes. That should give you a guide as to what four points you definitely need to hit when you're sketching your circle. Okay. So let's do one more together. This one, x squared all by itself, there's no h, that means it's zero. The y coordinate, minus four, that tells us it's positive four. And then when you take the square root of the radius squared, our radius is three. So we plot those points x coordinate 0, y coordinate is positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then our radius is 3, so we go to the right, up 3, to the left 3, and down 3. And then you want to sketch your circle. There you go. Go ahead and try this next one, and then check back with me to see if you got it right. Hopefully your graph of your circle looks like the one, the blue one that I drew here. Now if you don't have graph paper and weren't able to draw it accurately, then make sure you at least have the center coordinates are negative 6, 4 and the radius is 2. Here we want to write the standard equation of the circle with the given center and radius. So we did a little practice of this before when we were writing down the equation from the graph that we were given. So we're just going to continue with that. Now remember. Our formula is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. So we want to take our center, 0, 0, and then when we plug that in for h and k, we're left with x squared plus y squared, and then we want to square the radius, 2 squared is 4. Go ahead and try the next two, and then check back with me and see if you got the right answer. Hopefully you got x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 9 for the second one, and then x plus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 9 for the third one. Now in this last set of examples, it tells us that the equation of the circle is x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 9. So there's some circle on a coordinate plane with a center 4, 2 and radius of 3. And it says tell whether each point is on the circle, in the interior of the circle, or in the exterior. So that means we have this coordinate plane and then there's going to be the circle on the coordinate plane roughly with the center 4, 2 with a radius of 3. Um, so that's going to be my circle. I'm just sketching it. Now this is just for the idea. This is not how you're going to solve this problem because you actually need to work it out algebraically. But I want you to understand what this is saying. It's saying that the center is 4, 2. And it's also telling us that the radius is 3. Now given that information, 
any of these coordinate points, there are only three places that the coordinate point could be. Either somewhere inside the circle, somewhere on the circle, or somewhere outside of the circle. Now the way we're going to tell that, of course it's easy to do that when you actually draw it on the coordinate plane. However, like I said, we want to do this algebraically. That means you're going to take the x and y coordinate that you're testing and you're going to substitute it in for x and y in this equation. And then you're going to see whether this left side is going to be less than 9, equal to 9, or greater than 9. So this is kind of like the idea of when we did the Pythagorean theorem converse to see if it was an acute triangle, a right triangle, or an obtuse triangle. So we're going to take this equation that we have of the circle, and just like we did with the Pythagorean theorem converse, instead of an equal sign, we're going to turn that into a box and see what symbol goes in here, less than, equal to, or greater than. So let's start off with this one. Our x coordinate is going to substitute with 4, and then we have minus 4 squared, plus our y coordinate will be 5, minus 2 squared, and then we have box 9. 4 minus 4 is 0, so we just have 5 minus 2 is 3 squared, box 9. 3 squared is 9, and that is going to equal 9. So that means that this coordinate point, 4, 5, is going to be on the circle. Now let's go ahead and test this out with the next one. We're going to substitute in 5 for the x coordinate and then 1 for the y coordinate, box 9. 5 minus 4 is 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 1 squared is 1, negative 1 squared is also positive 1. So when you add 1 plus 1, you get 2 is going to be less than 9. So when you end up with the side that you simplified with all the coordinates is less than the other one. That means this is going to be inside the circle. Now lastly, let's try this one. We have 0 minus 4 squared plus 2 minus 2 squared equal to 9. So 0 minus 4, this gives us a negative 4. 2 minus 2, that's going to be 0. Negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. So we actually have that. The side with the coordinates that we simplified is greater than the radius squared. This means that this coordinate point, 0, 2, is going to be outside the circle. That's it for our lesson on circles. And this actually finishes out our unit on circles. So next class, we'll work on this worksheet to do some practice, and then we're going to start reviewing for your test. So if you need to, make sure you start going back to rewatch videos and lessons that you didn't really understand the first time we went through it. Okay, I'll see you in class.